Hello, I'm Stefan Graeber, I'm the project leader for LexD, and today I'd like to talk about GPUs, specifically how GPUs can be used within LexD containers or virtual machines. I guess the first question would be why? Like, why would you even want to do any of that? Well, GPUs these days do far more than just render a desktop environment. Um, they can be used for artificial intelligence and machine learning workloads. They can be used for video encoding and decoding, or they can be used for a number of other rendering tasks, which may not be just you know about playing games or rendering a desktop environment. NVIDIA is effectively the biggest player in in this space. Um, they their you know GeForce and and server grade offering uh, is pretty much everywhere. Um, the CUDA and some of the other tooling that's been built around compute and machine learning and that took over um, the entire space. So we're going to be focusing on NVIDIA today, uh, even though LexD does so support uh, Intel and AMD and I'll touch on that towards the end of this video. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is just refresh LexD here to its latest version. And one more thing that's probably worth mentioning around NVIDIA is that because it's using um, binary drivers on Linux, it's, there's some complexity in lining, in lining up libraries and drivers and everything properly between containers and virtual uh, containers and the, the host, which is not something that would typically affect users uh, on, in, on AMD or Intel, for example. So that also is another reason why we've got a bit more NVIDIA specific knowledge in next day because there are, there are more things to deal with. Uh, so in this case, I'm just going to be doing a quick LexD in it uh, on, on on this machine. Um, this machine is actually a virtual machine uh, to which two pretty cheap uh, NVIDIA GPUs have been passed. So a bit later, I'm going to be looking at the other side of this and how to create virtual machines like this one that do get physical GPUs passed through. And actually kind of touching on that, um, so here we can see this virtual machine has both an NV well, two NVIDIA GT 730s, which is, I think, about the cheapest GPU we could find. I don't myself run any kind of GPU workload. Uh, the only use with four GPUs that I have around here is for testing. So the cheapest GPU does just fine, and that's what we have here. Um, one of the questions that's kind of worth, uh, worth asking is like, do you want to run your workload in a container or virtual machine. In general, container is the best option for GPUs because they can share GPUs. So you can have a system with just a single GPU or a couple of GPUs like here, and then use those from as many containers as you want. And they will work exactly as if it, they were individual applications. That works well. It has a bit of a downside in that some of those workloads could use all of the resources and then negatively impact the other workloads running on the same GPU. Virtual machines don't really work that way. So instead you need to pass, unless you're dealing with server grade cards that do virtualization, which is another, another topic that I'll touch on a bit later. Um, in general, you will need to pass an entire GPU to a virtual machine. And if you only have one GPU in your system, then you can't do that because then you don't have a GPU to render your desktop or even a text console anymore. Um, the other thing with passing GPUs to virtual machines is that you need proper hardware support for that. Uh, the GPU itself doesn't need anything particularly special, but your motherboard needs to have been wired properly so that the, there's nothing sharing the PCI lanes that the GPU is getting. And also making sure that um, the, the memory management unit, so the IOMMU in that case, um, assigns completely different groups for those different devices so that the GPU can be passed to a virtual machine without dragging along a bunch of other devices. That there are some motherboards where like unfortunately things like the SATA controller are is connected in the same group as the main GPU, which then means the only way you could pass the GPU to a virtual machine is by also passing the SATA controller, which if that's where your boot drive is on, would be a problem. Uh, so that depends kind of on your hardware um, and there are, there are some more difficulties around doing that. So in general, containers work way better for those kind of workloads. 
it would definitely be my, my recommendation. Now, so in this case, we do have two GT730s, as I mentioned, that's running inside the Dextibia tool machine, and we'll go see the other side of that a bit later. Um, first thing first, we're just going to be creating a Ubuntu 20.04 container. And by default, containers don't really have any limits applied to them, so they get to see all the memory, all the CPU, and all of that, but they they are quite restricted in what devices they can see. Um, so this container that I just started, if we look at slash dev, does not see any of the NVIDIA or other, other GPU devices listed there at all. So it doesn't have access to any other. This can be changed. Um, if you just want to expose all the GPUs in the system to it, you can do that by adding a new device, just call it GPU. Its type will be GPU and the type of GPU would be physical. And doing that means tells LexD to pass in every single GPU on the system to the instance. And now if we look at slash dev, here they are, all of the NVIDIA device entries. And dev, dev DRI also showed up now with all three cards. Um, we've got three because that virtual machine has a virtual GPU and then the two NVIDIA cards. So that works well. Um, but there is no driver inside that virtual machine, so I, uh, inside that container, so I can't run NVIDIA SMI. It just does not exist. I could um, I could go and install the right NVIDIA driver, line it up with the version of the driver from the whole system, and that would work. Until the whole system has its driver updated, then things will break. To avoid that, uh, LexD supports integrating with uh, the NVIDIA container project. So you can just do config set onto the instance and then set the key called NVIDIA runtime, set that to true, then start the instance again. And what that does is it still passes the GPUs the exact same way. So slash dev still looks the same way as it did before with the NVIDIA GPU entries here. But what has changed is that now the tools and libraries from the NVIDIA driver are passed in. So NVIDIA SMI now works and shows both, both of the GPUs. So in this case, it just passes everything that's on the system, but that can also be restricted. So you can stop the container. Then NextD has a comment called info-resources, which lists the um, hardware available on the on the system, that's on the type of thing. Just scroll down on this one a bit. Then in the GPU section, we can see both of the NVIDIA cards are here. And then there's a basic uh, Vatayu GPU in my case here too. Now say we just want to expose the first one, you can get its PCI address and then edit the instance config. Scroll down to the GPU section and just set what the PCI address is. Let's start the container again. And going inside that container, NVIDIA SMI now shows just a single GPU and it shows the one we passed in. So if you've got multiple GPUs, that can be one way to restrict what workload gets access to what. Um, that works just fine. But that's about as much um, flexibility as you get, really, um, when run with containers. Now, let's go look at the other side of this. I'm going to be stopping this virtual machine and go on this system, which is actually the host that that virtual machine is running on. I'm going to be creating a new Ubuntu 20.04 cloud virtual machine. Let's call it V1. And let's just go that. This will take a a tiny while because it needs to actually download the image and pack it and everything. Um, but it's gonna create an Ubuntu 2004 virtual machine, and then we can do the same thing effectively as we did inside of the virtual machine, but now on the physical host. Look at what the VC addresses are, what the GPUs um, are like, and then um, from there can configure that virtual machine to have access to one or both of the GPUs. And then when that will effectively disconnect those GPUs from the host system, so they will, as far as the, the host kernel are concerned, is concerned, those GPUs will vanish 
and then they will show up as PCI devices on, on the virtual machine. While this is going on, because it takes a little while, um, I can go over some of the other the other things we support that won't really make it into that video because they're, they're quite a bit more advanced. And instead, you, you could go and look for the GTC talk that I, I gave earlier this year, which covered those points. Um, basically, with NVIDIA, you can have two different stacks. There's the normal NVIDIA driver for consumer grade cards and quadros and that kind of stuff, which is what's used here. And then there is a NVIDIA grid vGPU driver, which is a paid licensed service and set of drivers that allows for GPU virtualization on modern uh, NVIDIA hardware, like especially on the data center grid hardware. So I actually have another system here with an NVIDIA Ampere A100 card. And that card supports all of those server grid features. It supports multi-instance GPU, which is a way to, uh, at the hardware level, slice an NVIDIA GPU and then pass those slices either to virtual machines or to containers. LexD supports that. Um, like back here back on the system, I used um, GPU type equals physical. So if dealing with multi-instance GPU, you can do GPU type equals MIG, and then you can pass an additional two config options to set exactly what GPU instance and compute instance you want to use. And then only that physical slice of a GPU will be passed into the container. The same works for virtual machines. Um, for NVIDIA, that's primarily done through MDEV, so the Mediated Device Framework. And the way that works is there's a number of um, hardware profiles that the card supports. You can choose what profile you want depending on the amount of resources you want. So size of frame buffer, number of encoders, decoders, and usually the memory, I think, are the main distinguishers there. You pick one of those profiles. And then you can you do GPU type equals MDEV, MDEV equals name of the profile, and then that gets passed to the virtual machine. MDEV is not supported with containers, it only works with virtual machines. And recently, um, I believe on the MPR cards, NVIDIA also added SIOV based protection, which effectively adds an extra security layer around the, the way memory is handled on those GPUs. And LexD effectively does it transparently. So you can do, if you do MDEV, so GPU type equals MDEV on an MPR card that has SIOV enabled, then it will pick a muted device from the right SIOV virtual function, just works. All right, so that virtual machine has started. Uh, if we go inside it, we're gonna be seeing a pretty clear lack of anything in NVIDIA. Also seeing a bit of a lack of the PCI utils. Oops. So I'm just gonna be installing PCI utils in there. Uh, that was, uh, maybe no dash. No dash. There we go. Okay, so LSPCI finds no NVIDIA GPU. That's normal, it's just a virtual machine, there's nothing passed to it. I'm gonna be stopping it. And then do the same resources query I did earlier inside the virtual machine, but now on the physical system. There's a bit more hardware, so it takes a bit more scrolling. But then in the GPU section, again, we can see the two GT730s, but this time seeing them from the, from the host point of view. Um, let's pick one of them. So taking the PCI address of the first one, and I can do device add, the virtual machine is called V1, let's call that GPU, grid GPU zero. Type is GPU, GPU type is physical, and the PCI address. And start it back up. You'll notice that the start time is quite a bit longer with virtual machines uh, when adding a GPU. That's because it's a bit more dense that Lexi needs to do to disconnect the PCI device and pass it to, to the emulator. Um, but yeah, that doesn't take very long. And in a few seconds, we should be able to get a, get a shell inside that virtual machine. And this time there should be a GPU on it. There we go. Um, you also notice something here, uh, which is that those GPUs come with a built-in graphic card, uh, a built-in sound card that's used for the um, HDMI and DisplayPort audio. 
because they are effectively coming from the same card, they both get moved at the same time. So that's kind of part of the IOMMU feature I mentioned earlier. Those two are in the same IOMMU group and the entire content of the group gets moved. So the, the sound card comes with the, with the GPU. That was with passing one GPU. We can try passing both. Um, just shutting down that, uh, that virtual machine. There we go. So doing the resources again. If I go down to the GPU section, pick the second GPU, and do a device add again. Let's call that GPU1. Pass the PC address, and start it back up. Now, because this is a virtual machine, we don't get the nice experience of the NVIDIA runtime configure option. There's no way for LexD to magically pass in the driver and all of the tooling inside the virtual machine. So in this example, I'm just using LSPCI to prove that the, that the GPUs are there. But if you were to actually use this, you would need to go and install the NVIDIA binary drivers inside that virtual machine to actually make use of them. Okay, boot it up, and now we've got both of the both of the GPUs. So that's really it uh, for pass through of standard NVIDIA GPUs, both into containers and into virtual machines. As I mentioned, things are a bit different if you're dealing with the NVIDIA grid vGPU type hardware and software solution. LexD supports it perfectly well. We do have some examples and documentation around that. Um, but I'm not going to go into details in this video because it would easily double the length to just try and cover some of those aspects. And it's realistically hardware that the vast majority of people don't have access to. It's quite expensive and it's primarily targeted at um, some cloud providers, private clouds, uh, some labs, that kind of stuff. The One of the last thing to take on a cover would be what kind of support XD has for both Intel and AMD, so kind of the competitors. Intel supports, um, both of them work just fine as far as passing them through. There is no need for something like NVIDIA runtime with them because there's no need for alignment between libraries and drivers using those two platforms. They rely entirely on open source drivers and so they effectively just work. Um, Intel supports virtualization of GPUs uh, using mediated devices on some of their some of their cards. So if you're on one of those, you can use the pass through to a virtual machine using MDEV, which then lets you pass a slice of your physical GPU inside the virtual machine and that can be used for encoding, decoding, and some amount of rendering. On the AMD front, I'm not aware of any AMD card that does media devices for virtual machines. Um, but there are an AMD GPUs that support SRIOV. So they can just slice the card into, I believe it's like eight chunks per GPU. And those cards are dual GPU quite often. Uh, and then you can pass those fixed slices to virtual machines. Uh, I've got a couple of those cards here and they work, they work perfectly fine with LexD. So that's kind of your options. But in general, for, for consumers, your options really are run containers that can access the GPU directly, which is in 99% of the cases, what you're what are you what you're gonna want to do, or if you've got, say, like you know, an external GPU enclosure or an external GPU, an external GPU in your system, then you might want to pass that GPU as a whole to a virtual machine, and you can do that with the GPU pass through I showed here. Anything other than that tends to be a bit more specialized, a bit more targeted towards private clouds, complex labs, that kind of stuff, and tends to require more specialized complex hardware, that LexD supports perfectly well as well. So we've got a pretty solid uh, GPU story across the board. Uh, in any case, that's that's it for this one. I hope this was uh, quite useful. I'm not a GPU person. I don't do machine learning, deep learning, any of that kind of stuff. So I can't really show you running those particular workloads and getting results out of them, but I can show how to get the hardware and get the the basic drivers and stuff in place as I did here. And after that, you can run pretty much whatever software stack you feel like in those containers or virtual machines and use your hardware as in any way you want. So thanks for watching. If you've got any questions, the comment section is there, or you can go on our community forum and ask there. Um, 
we have documentation for all of the different GPU types and config options and whatnot in our documentation, which I'm going to be linking below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.